All right, welcome everyone to our Resource YYC Lunch and Learn. So that you are aware, Resource YYC is a co-working community geared to professionals. We offer our Lunch and Learn sessions as a means for our community to network and provide meaningful learning opportunities. We also provide private office spaces, dedicated desks, day drop-ins, and virtual office options. If you are not yet a member with us, we encourage you to check out our website and follow us on social media. Links will be posted in the chat. Today we have Patricia, who is a conversion copywriter with her own business. She writes marketing material, you know, think websites, blogs, and emails for small to and medium-sized businesses. Over to you, Patricia. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Uh, so good morning, everybody, hopefully, and I guess good afternoon to Michelle from Toronto. Um, I am here to talk about the value of the right words, how to use the power of words to create a good, solid, successful website for your business. So why are the right words so important? Many of you have heard the phrase, your website is your 24 seven salesperson. So when you up your game, you up your results. When you have a great successful website, it speaks to your ideal audience, your fans become super fans. And depending on what industry you're in, a great website can be a huge differentiator for your business. So for those in high competition areas or industries like real estate agents, financial planners, accountants, a good website is essential to speak to your ideal client. People get to know, like, and trust you, and then they become part of your community or they buy from you or support you or whatever it is that you need them to do. So if you're an entrepreneur offering a product or service, your website needs to promote that product or service for a long time over and over again. So if you think about the rule of seven in sales, you could think about something, somebody has to see something or hear something seven times before they take action. So it's a busy marketplace online. Um, or, and obviously if you have a brick and mortar store or a, um, a kiosk or something like that, you need to remember that online with your website, you, repetition is key because people need to warm up to you and what you offer before you can make that sale. Um, and I know that Salsa is from Vesta Energy and that's a really small uh, privately owned energy company. So they don't need a website to sell a product, but to create more trust that you're a good community partner, that you're a responsible operator and that you care about the community where you live and work. So, my name is Patricia. Uh, you pronounce my last name Viscount. Thank you very much, Rosemary. <laughs> uh, as she said, I'm a conversion copywriter and a content strategist. I've supported many small to medium sized businesses um, while they discover their brand voice and develop their websites using the process that I'm about to walk through. So whether you're looking to grow, change, or just engage with your prospects or communities in a better way, um, I'm here to help. So I've been in communications all my life. Uh, I was in the army. I was in oil and gas or the energy sector. And now I own my own company. But I started out, and I guess I still am, the first of the youngest, as the youngest of seven uh, small kids in a very small Cape Breton village in a house with actually one equally so small sized bathroom. So <laughs> I've gotten good at communicating. <laughs> uh, I started my own business in 2016 and I discovered that I could work with people that I liked and that I believed in on projects that lit them up and that also got me excited. Since then, I've worked with, as you'll see in a couple of samples in the, the, uh, my presentation, uh, financial planners, accountants, business coaches, manufacturing companies, energy companies. So I've got, uh, I have several, uh, several industries under my belt. So what are, you, what are you gonna walk away with today? I hope you walk away with a better understanding of what you need to think about, the fundamentals that need to be in place before you write your website and what your prospects need to see or read on your page. I know it's tough to write about your own business and you have a lot of information in your head and it's all important to you, but maybe not to your audience. So today I will give you some ways of looking at and for information to help you decide what you need to include on your website, 
help you organize it so that you can plan it better and then decide what it looks like and what's best for you and your business. So full disclosure, myself and PowerPoint haven't really been acquainted in a really long time. So the slides might not be the best skookum slides you've ever seen, but I hope the information is useful and clear. And I'd also like this to be a bit of a discussion. Uh, so I'll stop and get questions as we go. And then I'll leave some time at the end so that we can get, so we can go over some stuff as well. All right, so are we good? All right, let's go. So what are we gonna, what are we gonna cover today? So much of the development of your website happens before you even put one, page, one word down on the page. And if you do the pre-work, then it makes the actual writing of the website so much easier. So we're gonna talk about brand and tone of voice. Do you know how you want your business to show up? Your ideal audience, do you have any idea or do you have a good solid idea of who they are? And then we'll get into research, which is my favorite part. I love this part. So voice of customer, reviews and testimonials, um, some competition. It's always good to take a look at what your competition is doing, but not get hung up on it. And we'll talk about that later. Samples of websites that you like, keywords and phrases, and then we'll get into the crunchier bits. So the headlines and the problems you solve, clarity, because clarity is always key, calls to action, problem, agitation, and solution, and we'll get to that later. You versus we or me or I, and then images. So we start at the beginning. What do you need to think about before you even start to write? So a lot of companies, a lot of small companies have a brand. You know what your values are. You understand what you, who you want to serve and, and what you, what you, what you, who you serve, what your service is, what your product is, um, and just generally how you want to show up. But do you know how you, want to sound, like what the words are that you use. Do you use casual language? Do you use more formal language? Do you want to be a little salty or, you know, business next door? It obviously depends on what industry you're in. And then you're obviously your ideal client or your ideal audience. Who do you serve? Who do you want to attract to your business or your website? Who do you not want to serve? Because that's also as important as who you want to work with. Um, what do they need to know? What do they want you to solve? What problems are you are they looking to you for you to help them solve? So I have a couple of samples to show you a little bit about what I mean. So this one is Kira Hug. She is a fellow copywriter. Um, and her tagline is own your weird conversion copy. So she writes for personality brands. So she is all about color and being bold and sassy. And she uses what I covered on the other slide or what I had on the other slide is the problem agitation solution. So when you're writing a website, this is one of the ways you can um, write your copy. So you introduce a problem. So are you ready to own who you are? The good, the bad, and the surprising. And then agitating it. So you poke at the bear a little. So you're a jerk. So it's kind of you accept that you're a jerk. And then the solution, I'll make you look amazing, even if you're a jerk. So she has a lot of color because she's looking at personality brands. She really knows her brand and her tone of voice. So she's she and I know her. I know Kira and she loves dressing up. She loves costumes. So her whole website is her in different costumes. She's got a bear and she has. Yeah. So she's she loves totally embracing her brand and she's bold and colorful. But she has to be because she's attracting the people that are jerks or that are weird or that a little off. And they're they're trying to be successful in business as well. Now, I wouldn't try this at home, <laughs> but if you think that this is where you want to show up, then you have to think about, okay, what are the, the language, what, is the, what are the words, what is the language that you can embrace, that you want to be known for, and, and then go from there. 
But in the meantime, <laughs> let's look at something a little bit more mainstream or tame. <laughs> so looking at a couple of different websites for brand and tone. So skincare brands like Dove or Sage Naturals or um, that kind of thing where they're, they're more sincere that is they use they often use real customers, but to write a good website that's really you and talks to your ideal client or customer in language that you use, you need to think about how you want to sound. So it's it's personality, it's brand personality, Dove's brand personality. It wants to attract female customers or consumers. They are they really want to have people. Um, believe that they care, that it's it's natural, that they really do want to look after your whole body, not just, you know, your skin or soap or whatever. Luxury brands like Chanel, Michael Kors or Louis Vuitton, they use sophistication and classic styles. They like clean, minimal copy, clean pictures, and for consistency across all of your branding. So if you look at Dove on other platforms, if you look at Chanel uh, on their Instagram or their emails, um, they're consistent across everything, all of their platforms, all of their marketing. So what I recommend for my clients is to create a brand and voice guide. So I had a, a client, she was a business coach who was pivoting from supporting big corporate clients to smaller companies and entrepreneurs. So the look and feel and her tone completely changed from what she was talking about or how she was presenting herself to um, totally different. She became a lot more casual, a lot more friendly, a lot more approachable, because obviously you don't speak to small businesses the same way you speak to executives and their staff. So we created a guide to help her and anyone writing for her to have consistent messaging and tone. And the guide doesn't have to be fancy. And just to be clear, neither does your website, but you have to have consistency and you have to be able to show people, whether it's you to remind you or people, you know, if you start to hire staff or you get um, outside help that you have these words and these are so, so clients and prospects understand that, okay, this is, this is how they're showing up. This is who, uh, who they are. And I, I agree with that. I, I feel comfortable with that. And they become your community. So the next one is your ideal client. So this is very text heavy. And uh, obviously after the last several slides, it's almost jarring, but it's a totally different tone. And it's, it's a financial planner, obviously. So they're a lot more wordy and because you're expecting people or you want people to give you a lot of money <laughs> and put your trust in them to look after your financial future. So of course, you're gonna to have to have more information, more text. And unfortunately um, with this client, it's a client of mine, um, they were also hamstrung by a corporate template. So that's also something to think about if you're a, uh, a franchisee or if you have to, if you're bound by certain templates from a, um, a corporate entity or a corporate headquarters, you have to think about what the words and how they're going to look in the corporate template. So depending on uh, what business you are in, like a financial planner, you can get very explicit with your copy. So when we're talking about uh, ideal clients, they're telling you, these are our clients. We want in established investors. And unfortunately, because um, it's just a screenshot, I couldn't get the, all of them in, but they say, okay, we want to get established investors and this is how we're going to support you. There's women and how we're going to support you differently. And then there's also young professionals or you know, the millennials or the people that are just learning or just starting on their financial journey. So um, obviously they're a lot more serious, a lot more text-based but it's important. Um, they, and they also follow the, follow the problem agitation solution. So the problem is that you work hard and you don't have time to, to manage your financial future. 
the agitation is success can be achieved by get, having help. Like you just need to get help. And then the solution is our process works to create a comfortable retirement. So we can help you. We've done it for other clients. Here's how we can help. Is there any questions? I'm, I'm going through, throwing a lot of stuff at you. No? All right. So how do you get, how do you determine your brand and your tone of voice and your ideal client? We get to my favorite part, research. Yay. <laughs> um, and the voice of customer, the research is my favorite part because most of the time you're actually speaking to or with your customers, your fans, your prospects, you're actually hearing voice of customer and you're gonna hear that a lot, um, voice of customer information because they tell you exactly what you wanna know. I was working with a restaurant owner and I asked him about his ideal client. And he said, oh, our customers are looking for this. They're looking for um, a high-end steakhouse. They're looking for, you know, posh. But when I actually started talking to his customers, they thought, thought something completely different. They were going for the experience. It was a very experience-based restaurant. So it's essential before you write your before you write your website to actually speak to your clients or your customers or you look at reviews and testimonials to see what they are looking, what are they going for you, to you for? Why are they choosing you? Because maybe the reason why your website isn't converting or um, that you're not getting a lot of hits is that you're talking to the wrong people or you're selling the wrong things. So I just wanna get you to think about when the last time was, if ever you asked, your um, customers or your prospects or your clients about themselves, about why they choose you, about what makes you so darn special. And so just think about that. If, you've, if you haven't, then why not? Um, in terms of reviews and testimonials, so if you don't have time or you don't feel comfortable or you know, there's a bunch of different reasons why you can't talk to your own clients, um, what what about reviews and testimonials? Where do you find easier samples to get your customer's voice? Whether it's Google or Facebook or Reddit or Quora, um, people will email you. But the most important thing is to, sorry, the most important thing to remember about reviews and testimonials is to ask for them. If customers have just had an amazing experience and they'd love to tell their people, their community, their networks about you, but you need to ask them because most people won't think about it. This is so important and I can't offer emphasize it. It's really important to have testimonials on your website because a lot of people are, um, sorry. Lost my train of thought. Now I switched, I changed the slide and I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, a lot of people are wanting to share after having, I have a, st a stat for you. Um, after having a positive experience with a company, 77% of customers would recommend it to a friend. So 77% of people that have just had an amazing experience with you want to talk about it. You just need to ask them. Uh, and I, I love this quote because it's, you know, customers aren't just sharing their story and what a great thing that, that you just did for them. They're actually teaching you about your product, service, or business. So how do you make it better? How do you get more of it? How do you um, bring it more to, better to the world? That kind of thing. It's just, it's really important. <clears throat> so what does good look like? So here are three examples of um, quotes that I've taken or that I've um, well, taken off, web, off the web, oh, into the interwide web. So details are everything. You want to get reviews or testimonials that help prospects see that you've solved up that problem for somebody else. So um, for the first one, you know, it's this chair has all the bells and whistles. 
uses excellent quality materials and is the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in and well worth the price. If you can get somebody to say it's well worth the price, this is um, a chair, an ergonomic office chair manufacturer. And um, it's family run, it's family owned, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, I have a couple of samples of their website, but you need to get those details because especially if it's expensive, people are going to need to have that trust and that, um, that belief that for this money that they're going to shell out for a very expensive thing that you are going to make it worth their while that it's going to be an excellent thing and if other people have had the same problems back problems neck problems then they need to understand that this chair is going to work for them extremely helpful and approachable staff while friendly and approachable is great you can get that almost anywhere so this doesn't really help you um because we tend to focus on other life matters, uh, Mark is great at ensuring we pay attention. We trust him to give thoughtful, sound investment planning advice with our long-term interests in mind. Who doesn't want that when they're looking at a financial planner to, to look after their retirement? Um, anything, anybody? Are you guys all good? We have any questions? I do. Yeah. I'm just wondering, what are the key questions that you would ask a client to answer on a review? That, my love, is <laughs> I actually have a testimonial template. Okay. So yeah. I <laughs> yeah. So and it it does it covers several of the questions that I um, I get people to answer because you do you want details. So yes, I have a, a testimonial template for you to download. Um, I wanted to share it today and I'm hoping that I'm, well, I, I just got an um, email from my, um, my website designer and he said that all of the forms on my website are down. So, oh, so I might have to, I'll have to email it to you if you're okay with that, Maria. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. That's great help because yeah. I want to make sure that I give them the right information so that they, they know what to say. Um, yeah. yeah. So, thank and, you for that. Oh, no worries. Well, thank you. Um, no, I'm, oh, there's chat. Okay. So, yes, I have a template. I have a template for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's that research and then more research. And this is interesting um, because you're just looking at the marketplace, you're looking at your competition, you're looking at samples of websites that you like. And why do you like them? Do you like it because um, the, it's a good layout, they have good graphics, or they you like the tone of voice, that kind of thing, that's really important. Um, but depending on who your competitors are, your primary competitors, just look at what they're doing, how they're serving their people, and look at their reviews. Like what, what problems are they solving for their clients? And you can kind of, use, you can sort of use it if you have the same services or if you want to be able to get better at that than your competition. Um, again, I mentioned these earlier, but people in certain industries like realtors, financial planners, massage therapists, there's so many of them out there in the market. You really do need to have a unique selling proposition. You need to have, uh, you need to understand who your ideal client audience is and what you solve for them in order for you to differentiate yourself. Um, Again, just a word of caution when you're looking at your competition's website. I've had a lot of clients that say, oh, you know, my competition has this and I'd really like to put that on my website, but you don't know whether it's working or not. So you just use that, take it with a grain of salt and use it if you, if you really like it or if you, you know that it's been working for them. But if you're just doing it to put on your website because your competition has it, that might not work. And finally, keywords and phrases. So how are your ideal clients searching for services like yours? What phrases are they using? Can you put some of that, those words into your copy 
So, you know, keywords, it also helps you with SEO. It helps you with um, getting found by Google. So if you can find, find out some of the words and just, I mean, you just Google in um, financial planner and you see all of the financial planners that come up, the Google re results that come back. And a lot of those keywords you can you can steal or not steal, but you know you could say okay these are the the questions that people are asking when they're talking about financial planners. So how do I use those words on my website? Okay, now we put it all together. So you use the fundamental research that you that you got that you found that you gathered and then you use it to write your content these are some of the things that are physically on your um on your web page that you need to think about your headlines how do you write engaging headlines what problems do you solve for your prospects or your community how clear is your message don't make people think they don't want to think they've been thinking and making decisions all day so make it easy for them to understand what you do, how you can serve them, and how they can get your product or service. Um, what are they thinking about when they come to your website? Uh, a lot of times it's they want a better version of themselves. They want less stress. They want more free time. They want more family time. They don't want to miss out on kids' activities anymore. They want more money, that kind of thing. And what is your call to action? What do you want them to do? Um, problem agitation solution. We kind of talked a little bit about that and I will go over, I have some website samples that um, I sort of point out the problem agitation solution copy on there. The you versus we, I, I see this a lot on websites and it's, you know, you talk about we, me, I have 25 years of experience. I'm a family run company. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, but you don't ever talk about you. So you have a lot of stress. You have, you're running a business. You're missing out on your family. You, you, you. So it's about you. It's about me, <laughs> my website, but it's really about who you serve and how you saw what the problems that you solve. And the images, I know I'm a copywriter. And so uh, the images, I shouldn't be talking a lot about images, but I think that it's so important when you're doing a good quality website that images need to match the content or the copy. You know, and a lot of time it's of people, people enjoying your product, people um, interacting, talking, people about your, sorry, uh, pictures of your team, that kind of thing, because people enjoy looking at other people. Okay, so. And more about that later. So let's dive in. So I've captured a few screenshots of samples that I think are good and not so good of small business websites. Um, again, full disclosure, some of them are my clients, some of them are just interesting, and some are my clients that are not so interesting. So there you go. Okay, before we start, is there anything, any questions? All right, let's dive in. All right, so. This is, and uh, some of the websites I've kept their names and some I haven't, just there's no rhyme or reason other than if I'm saying that it's not, I don't particularly like it or I don't think it's very good, then I took away their, <laughs> I took away their logo just so that I, I don't have to feel bad about saying that it's not, it could use improvement. So you might've heard the phrases, simple sells, confuse and you'll lose clarity over clever. Um, and um, you may have heard this stat before or not, but you have 12 seconds to hook your visitor. 12 seconds to show them that you can help solve their problem, that you're knowledgeable, that you're trustworthy. And it goes down to eight seconds if your ideal client is in the I generation, which I think is um, 18 to 30 or something. It's basically below so they're because they're a screen generation, they want stuff now, 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 now. So if you only have 12 seconds to show people that you are the one they've been looking for, you need to be clear and simple. So your headline, 
It has to be clear and concise. Action verbs are best, and it's best practice, but not always set in stone, for it to be seven words or less. Uh, another, st another stat about clarity, because you know I'm all about stats today. 66% uh, of adults feel that valuing their time is the most important thing that a company can do to provide them with good online customer experience. So clear, concise, get to the point, um, that, that's important to customers. So three things you need to answer on your website. What do you offer? How are you helping people win? What is your promise? How will it make my life better? In this case, everyone's gonna be jealous. Um, or I'll have amazing memories of this event, of these events. And what do I need to buy it? Start here, start your free training. And if you want, if you see the call to action buttons, they're very prominent. They're clear, you know exactly that this is where you need to press. So some of the things that you should consider when we're talking, and I'm talking about the header and the call to action, that kind of thing. So your header, the language is simple and it's, it's clear. So it says what you do, obviously, become the photographer, I, Sorry, become the photographer everyone is jealous of. So that is, um, it's clear. And that's what they're going to help you with. He's a photographer, obviously. He's a photographing coach. He has free training, that kind of thing. Strong call to action. You need to ask your customers or your prospects to do something, to buy something, to accept or reject something. Good uh, calls to action have action verbs. So sign up today learn more, see packages, request a demo, request a quote. Um, I want to grow my traffic, get a free sample, that kind of thing. And then if you want to provoke emotion or enthusiasm, um, you, there are longer calls to action. So it's, you know, you can add numbers, buy now and get 50% off, add adjectives, find your dream home with us, Make a promise, lose weight in six weeks, or um, a, a FOMO, fear of missing out. So influence or you know, agitate that. Limited time offer, get your free t-shirt, get your free mug, get your free whatever. Um, you have a hook. Tell them how, what great things are gonna happen. Are you ready to take photos that you can be jealous, that, that people are jealous of or that you can brag about. And then how our service works, start your free training. And again, the you versus we, it's you. You're becoming the photographer everyone is jealous of. And obviously images, look at that beautiful, photo that beautiful photography. That's amazing. So further down the page, this is as you go down, it's got, you have to guide your visitors through your web page. So what is the problem agitation solution? The problem is you're intimidated. You have, you've bought all of this camera gear and now you don't know how to use it. You're frustrated, it's the agitation. You, you're frustrated that you don't get good shots. But the solution is our easy step-by-step -step course. So what's gonna happen if they don't buy it? It's a waste of money and they have frustration. But what's gonna happen if they do? They're, they have great memories of an event. They have great memories in less time. They have wonderful shots. People are gonna be jealous. And then the plan, how, how, do you, how are they going to buy? It's three easy steps for, to being a great photographer. Take the next step. And then finally, look at that, some social proof, testimonials. Hear from some of our students. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this is the capitals. You should not use capitals. You, you can capitalize a word or a small phrase, but don't capitalize it all just because it's like shouting at people and nobody likes to be shouted at. Okay. Now, that's our first one. I have a couple more. Is every, is there, are there any questions? Anybody? No? Anybody got? 
Uh -huh. uh, there, there's no call to action on that page. That's the, the call to action was so this the last three slides was the same page just because it's a screenshot I couldn't whoops. Ah, there, that one, uh, that one. So this is this is the same page. That's why there's no call to action. Sorry. I just because I have a screenshot I had to break them up into three separate um, sections but that this this call to action is the take the next step. Um, get your free training. Okay, that's a good question, though, and I should have been a little bit more um, clear. So my the next one is um, it's an e-commerce store, so uh, or it's an e-commerce website. Um, this is a client of mine. It's a U.S. company, or it's sorry, it's a Canadian company, but it's a U.S. version of their website because they have US version and a Canadian version. So, because they can't ship across the border or people can't buy in the States, they can't buy Canadian, whatever. So <laughs> that's a little confusing, I'm sorry. Um, so headline, it's long. This is it and this is, and my bad, because this is my website. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's clear, but it's long, it's too long. It's, you know, the, your, your offer is basically, you know, we create elegant office chairs to reduce health, pain and discomfort. That's really what it should be. The innovative technologies, I think is just, it's noise. I don't think that people care that it's innovative. I think that people just wanna know that, that they create elegant office chairs. Um, so what's the promise? Elegant office chairs to re reduce pain and discomfort. How will it make my life better? I'll be comfortable. I'll feel good all day. I'll be have more energy. Um, and how do I need? What do I need to do to buy it? I it, contact us or choose a chair specific to you. So the header statement we already talked about that. It's terrible. <laughs> but, so mia culpa. Um, strong call to action. You need customers to buy something or to accept it, reject it. Um, either contact us in the right hand corner up here or choose a chair specific to you. So they get two options or two, two ways to engage with you. Um, okay. So the problem is you have pain, you have discomfort. The agitation is body fatigue and discomfort. You're, you have a long day, long hours of sitting uh, back and neck pain. The solution is chairs that adjust specifically to you so that you can get rid of your pain. What's going to happen if you don't buy? You deserve a better quality of life, so you should, you should buy. What would you do when you're pain free? Um, your plan is basically uh, choose a chair. Choose a chair, contact us, we can make it happen. You need to make it look easy, overcome their objectives so that they don't seem as risky, especially with, so this is, especially, sorry, especially when the, um, the product or the service is a lot of money. If it's a high ticket item, you really do need to show them that you're trustworthy and they should buy from you. So the next one, is the Canadian version of the same website. So this is a little bit better. I have to, I, I think that I've pulled it out of the fire. So custom design your office chair. Create a fully customizable ergonomic office chair to fit you and your home decor. So um, the call to action obviously is shop chairs. Um, the, and then there's this, there's an added, um way that they can engage with you it's less talk so it's a chat function and that's also a really good way to engage your customers if especially again if it's a high ticket item and they don't know what to do they're having some doubts you know the let's talk i think is a really good way of um helping them through or some customer service that will be able to ease some of their their stress about buying something that's pretty expensive. Um, and then 
below this on the same page is the collection list. So I wanted, because I wanted to um, call out the e-commerce, uh, e-commerce websites, obviously Shopify, WooCommerce, that kind of thing. I'm, it's probably a little bit over what you can do on DIY, but um, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of how, uh, how it might look if you wanted to at least, you know, plan your website and then take it for final design and development to a professional. So um, the collection list, really nice and simple pictures that are clickable. And then it, when you click on, I clicked on mesh back. So then you drill down to more detail. So it's important to have clear, concise language, good quality pictures, but you don't want people to work too hard. So you have three mouse clicks, home page, product collection, and then your product description. And of course, always what's in it for me. And I don't know if, uh, obviously in 2020, Amazon has exploded and lots of people are buying things on Amazon. Lots of people are buying things online, but how many of us have actually bought something online without checking at least one review? Anyone? Has, uh, no? Okay, so that's another point, and I know that I'm harping on these so much, but um, testimonials and reviews are so important. Okay, so. Um, I have a comment. Yeah. Um, what do you, with what do you think of typography? Because where you mentioned the chairs and the pricing, it's uh, more rigid, clean lines. But then when it says, yeah. let's talk, it's softer, kind of inviting you to communicate. Yes. And I think that, again, I'm not a designer, but I think that that is just, it's inviting them in if they're, you know, if they need more information, I think it's a lot more friendly. It's a bit more casual. So yes, I think that that's, that's how they do it. And I think it can be used really effectively on websites, mm -hmm. um, but you have to be able to look at it to make sure that it's clear. Cause you also have to think that people, a lot of people are accessing it on their mobile, right? So if it's so if the, the calligraphy or the, the topography is so confusing that you can't read it on a small screen, then it's, it's going to be very difficult for people to, to click through or to, to proceed. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. So, okay. I only have a couple more slides left. So um, are any questions up until now? Is, are people getting any use out of this? Is this good? Good information. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And I, I think I saw, just saw Salsa. Hi. So, <laughs> so I know that a lot of this is um, it's on you know product and services, but I sort of mentioned in the beginning um, that it's a lot about talking to your communities. So um, with with um, small businesses or businesses that don't necessarily sell a service or a product, um, it's really important just to talk to your community and show them that you're a good corporate partner, show them that you're um, a, a responsible operator, show them that you, know, that you are part of the community and that you're concerned about the places where you live and work. So, sorry, I, <laughs> sorry. Squirrel, I'll get back. <laughs> this is um, a uh, website designer. Uh, and I just, I love this theme. It's playful, it's fun, it's creative. And he matches the image with the text. So I find that really important. Um, and they really embrace the, the cheeky tone of voice. So um, three things. What do you offer? What is a promise? What is your, what are you helping people with? They improve their website. They improve the, um, the words, they improve the function. How will it make your life better? You'll get more sales. And what do I need to buy it? Contact us. 
So it's the header statement is very simple and very clear. The call to action is very clear. The problem agitation solution, your problem, you're not getting any sales, agitation, your website doesn't make sense. And the solution, get a pro professional touch. Okay, and this one is a financial planner. I seem to have worked with a lot of financial planners. <laughs> so um, three things that they need. What do you need? What do you offer? We look after your financial well-being. How will it make your life better? I can live in the now. I can live stress-free. What do you need to buy it? Contact us. The only thing that I don't like is that the, the contact us needs to be a lot bolder. Um, it needs to have a button around it. It just needs to be called out a lot more. And if we put another contact us here on, on the main page, so people's eyes generally tend to move in a Z or a Z, depending on <laughs> how you say it. Um, so yeah, if you had it up here, they'd see it once and then they would see it again. And it just, when people scan, it's a lot easier. Um, okay, it's, it's fairly the header statement, live in the now and we'll look after your future. Strong call to action. Um, you know, you're stressed, you have no time, you have no real investment strategy. We'll look after your future. Okay. And I wanted to touch, before we leave, I wanted to really touch on images. So these are two um, uh, renovation companies, general contractors. So I love this one because although the pictures are small and you can click on them to bring them uh, larger so that you can actually see more detail, but they're professional, they're well-lit, there, you can see yourself in the space. It's beautiful, it's airy. And, you know, it talks, this is their gallery. So some of their past projects. So they've done this for other clients so they can do it for you. And no matter how big or small, they're one of a kind. Beautiful, I love that. This one, our work highlights a small percentage. Oops, ah, shoot, sorry. Mouse problems. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop using my mouse. Um, if you're interested in seeing our work, please call. I just, I, I, I don't know. And that's why I took out, <laughs> I took out the logos because I just this the pictures aren't professional. They're well lit, but what are they? Like I don't really understand why this is in the gallery. Like I think that there's they really do need to have much better pictures and talk about you know, make people feel like they want to be seen. They want this, they want this to be their home. It's beautiful, it's airy, it's wonderful. So yes, that's, that's all I have to say about that. And um, again, another image, professional renovators. Um, I just, this image is a bed and it's, and it's blacked out. So I don't really understand. And they're, they're shouting at me. <laughs> So that, that I just, I didn't really like. And so are you going to click them the learn more? I don't know because you can't really see it. And so I, 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 that's why I think that images are really important. And then this again, well lit, lots of beautiful natural light, um, you know, specializes this, we, you know exactly what they specialize in. Unique and timeless interior that reflect your vision, lifestyle, and brand. Beautiful. And they have social proof. They've won awards. They've done things. They have, and just who doesn't want to be seen in that space? I want to be seen in that space. I don't know. All right. <laughs> uh, so. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome, Maria. <laughs> You're so good at both websites. I was so worried. <laughs> Do we have any questions? My last last kick at the cat. And I apologize if anybody has cats. <laughs> Hi, I actually have a question. My name is Victoria. Um, is Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I work in an incredibly niche industry. 
Um, it's my company and only one other major competitor. A lot of individuals are leaving said competitor because of poor customer service, poor, just they don't treat their clients well. Um, I obviously don't want to call outside company in advertising. How do I go about saying you're going to get better here without calling out that company? I don't think you need to call it out. You just need to, to tell people and with social proof, you can really, um, you can show you have you have your customers or your former clients that actually tell you say it for you you don't need to call anybody out i think that that's important because you're you're better than that you know that you're um you don't need to to say anything about them and it's probably better that you don't yeah so do you have testimonials from your own clients uh, so I've been gathering some testimonials from the clients who have actually made the switch, but I'm also a little bit testy on that ground as well, knowing that they have recently made the switch. I don't know. It's murky waters. I don't necessarily want to, I, do, I want to capitalize on the fact that we can treat them better, but I don't want to capitalize on the fact that they're getting treated shitty where they are. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I think that if you, for so your unique selling proposition can be about your customer service and the testimonials, you know, can be about how well you treat your customers or that kind of thing. Like, I think that there's a lot of runway that you can use without calling out the other company, without even mentioning them, but you, um, uh, we can chat later. I think that I have some a couple of ideas, but I think that I think that you can do it in a way that will show people that you're that you're different without mentioning it, without talking about our competitors, without that kind of thing. I think that that's really important because you do need to show that you're professional and that you, yeah. although you know you don't want to, you don't want to start mudslinging in public. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, so just, just like flight attendants need to remind you about the emergency exits uh, <laughs> for a long flight. I wanted to remind you about what we said, what I set out to do today. So um, I hope it was clear and uh, useful. I wanted to bring you through the process or my process for creating from the very beginning business websites for clients. Um, the research, the tone of voice, all of that sort of thing, and then bringing it to um, the words on the page and what, what I go through, what my process is, what I can help you with, what you can do um, from you know tip to tail before sending the approved copy to a website designer or using Wix or GoDaddy or whatever it is that you use. I personally like WordPress, but that's, that's just a personal preference. So uh, please reach out if you want more additional information or you want to chat more about my process. Um, and if you have any uh, questions, then please reach out in all of the various <laughs> forms that I have listed here. Um, and uh, if you, I, uh, we talked about it at the beginning, but uh, some people have joined us since then. I have a testimonial template PDF that I'm going to send out. I was wanting to send you the link, but the link is broken. So I don't want to send it out and then lead you to something that doesn't work. So um, if people are okay, with my sending uh, the sending them a link to it via email, then I'd really appreciate that. Or if you, because I am very uh, passionate about testimonials, and I think that why try and figure out what you want to say when your customers, your clients, your prospects can say it for you. Oh, we've had a lot of requests for it in the chat, so <laughs> wonderful. I think you're good to send it. 
Okay, perfect. And now is there any, I know that we only have a couple more minutes left, but is there any additional questions or feedback or? I'm gonna look at the chat now. We're getting a lot of thank yous and great advice. I hope it would be. It was amazing. Excellent. Well, thank you thank very you. much. Yeah, Patricia, this this was very helpful and um, inspiring. I think my challenge is always the um, getting the right pictures, getting the right uh, for, font format, like you were saying. It's in those sorts of details and taking the time to get that done. Um, your examples, well, the good examples were visually pleasing and um, pick that up loud and clear. So thank you. I'll keep all that and do my best to follow your instructions. Thank you, Sheila. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be complicated, um, but I think that it does need to be in your voice. It needs to sound like you because yeah. for me, I think um, when people engage with you online and then they meet you in person and it's totally different, if you're trying to put on a mask or you know, literally a mask, um, then when people meet you and they want to work with you, then it's it's not who they you, you're not who they think they thought you were. So it's very important to use your own tone of voice. And I completely agree. Pictures are always a bit of a problem. Another financial planner that I work with, he does not like stock photo, does not like it, but he doesn't have enough really good pictures, professional pictures. And so we kind of have this dance where, okay, you're going to have to use stock until you can get some good pictures. But right. with your business, it's probably even more difficult, really, to get good pictures. Yeah, a lot of my stuff is confidential, private, you know, so can't show faces or anything like that. But um, stock photos seem to work, but it is articulating and getting across. And actually, that's a good point that... Um, I've written in my website some wording where the search engine optimization comes up and says, eh, you know, you, it's, it's not great. Or it says um, your, your, your writing is too complicated. So back to the first part you were saying, um, I decided after a while, I don't care if it's too complicated for your bots to think about, but my target audience yeah. will want to read this. And that's the other thing that you have to think about, especially in the energy sector. You know, you talk to people in acronyms and in internal speak all the time. So when you're looking at a website where you're trying to engage your community or your audience, you really have to think about, will they know what that means? So, and so, in your case, if your website is to attract clients and prospects, absolutely. But if it's, you know, just to inform your community or sell something or whatever, then they don't. Yeah, it just depends on how well you know your audience, which is, again, part of the whole um, getting to know your voice of customer and the research that you do. So we do have a question in the chat from Daniel, which is, yeah. do we need to put our price on the website? Haha, <laughs> the age old question, Daniel. Um, uh, you can, some people do and some people don't. Some people really like the range. So, you know, your bottom end to your top end or starting at that kind of thing. I fought it for a long time and I just put it up and I just have starting at. But it's, um, it, there are two schools of thought. Some people, it's, Definitely not, but the other ones are, if you put a range up and you show people where you start, then you qualify a lot of people that if they don't have the $2,000 or the $500, if they wanna get a blog for $50, you know that they're not your people and they will, they will self-select. So I know that that's not a real answer, but if you, if you do, I would do a range or a project starting at. Thanks for the question, Daniel. That's a good one. And it's, it's a common one. Anybody else? All right. 
I'm getting a lot of no's. Well, thank you very much, Patricia. That was a great uh, presentation, and I think everyone got a lot out of it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rosemary. And thank you for everybody who stuck out, stuck it out, asked some questions. I hope it was useful. And uh, I, I will send you an email with my template. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Patricia. That was great. Awesome. I'm so glad. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day.